Hi, I'm Deanna Brown and I'm going to talk you through my experiences with my action research project, the strengthening communities through Google and Fa versus Facebook. I learned a lot through my journey and I hope you will too. I started my capstone project because I wanted a better way for my kids to stay in contact with their class friends that are all over the state because they're in a virtual school. I needed to find a way to create communities that are safe, secure, available to teachers, kids, and parents. Ways that had been tried before were different Facebook pages for parents, but there were really issues with Facebook. They're overwhelming with games. They have constantly changing privacy settings. There's no way to meet online and personally connect, at least not in a larger than one-on-one -on -one person. When it came to my proposed target audience, I had certain ideas, but that was not meant to be. We'll continue on with that discussion at a later time. Thanks to the Full Cell program, I was able to create an efficient and well-planned timeline to help me meet goals, while still allowing the time for mistakes and obstacles to be met and handled. I decided that I should try and make communities both in Facebook and within Google communities. Using these two large-scale, deeply embedded platforms would allow me to leverage the familiarity of the test groups with social media within a limited learning curve. While members of the groups were not familiar with Google communities, they were familiar with Google products. This limited time investment allowed me to gain faster adoption and adaptation. We currently exist in a world with instantaneous communication and contact between people that are limited to three-letter abbreviations, LOL or BRB. With so little human contact and with our world having an increased technological backbone, developing those human connections has become increasingly infrequent. Keeping this in mind, the development of communities is no longer a grassroots effort alone with handshakes and drinks at the local watering hole. With this project, I hope to make it a possibility to say hello from 7,000 miles away while having your preferred drink in your house, while still developing vibrant and substantial communities. Far too often we see the Web 2.0 buzzword being thrown around. Web 2.0 is less about the reach of technology and more about the collaboration and quick responses from the collaborators. While Facebook statuses and likes for one word updates can seem asinine, but what about those discussions that go on for days, educating people on all sides? There are many websites out there that have maintained communities using Web 2.0 resources. I felt that it would be possible to do so with social media platforms and to do so with a global nonprofit group. This type of success could only serve to better the service provided by the group while in decreasing budget constraints and strengthening the volunteer community. During the course of my action research project, I have had to change the focus two times. With the two changes in, and initially, a literature review had to be done to develop the foundation for the project. While the members of the project changed, the focus of community development did not. With each delve into the world of research, common themes developed, no matter what participants were the focus on the project. These similarities were focused upon during the research review and become foundation elements when developing the experimental design of the project. Communication is the key to developing a vibrant community, but not the sole part of it. A common purpose and a group understanding and buy-in to that purpose are both vital. In my literature review, I've discovered that the process improvement is a necessary step, and through my capstone, I will show that it's not an extra step, but a necessary With many process improvements, the largest enemy seems to be time. With limited amount of time devoted to the task of improving communications and developing strong communities of practice, there are often cut corners. These shortcuts only serve to limit the effectiveness of the process, sometimes even sabotaging it in total. In any situation where cooperation can improve a scenario, you must deal with the biases that enter the relationship first. It's difficult to recognize these, but when they are identified, every effort should be made to remove them to increase the clarity of communication and the depth of the partnership. In the literature review, I found a community of practice needs to be created because that is another way to have open and free communication because it is fully understood that all parties are working for the same goals. Community of practice is a partnership between two or more groups working towards a common goal. It also represents the tearing down of barriers and letting down of the guard between the parties to find ways to work together. Now for the project, strengthen communities through Google versus Facebook. Which one's going to win out? I came out of the gate believing I was going to be able to work with my son's class and the families, but it turned out that that did not work, nor did it work to use my next target audience, the National Guard families. 
I thought of them for the same reason I thought of my son's class. The families are all over the state, but because of unit command and public relations regulations, that fell through. that my husband is part of a nonprofit group that is all over the world. Although he's part of a local group, it is easy for them to meet locally, but it becomes increasingly more difficult to meet as domains, states, and regions. Regions cover two to four states and the schedules need to be maintained. I concluded they could use the type of online community I was proposing for my capstone. I created the incoming surface and other media assets using Google Drive. Google Drive is one of the easier systems to use and is highly integrated. This integration of the program takes tracking surveys and other multimedia easy. This ease of tracking and creation was the primary reason it was chosen. I was also able to create a learning management system, or at least work inside Schoology and create my own classroom for my online learners so that I can, since I couldn't be everywhere at one time, they would be able to take the classes and be able to use the system to teach themselves. And then started Cycle One after creating their Google community page along with the private Facebook group. Knowing there were more people in the group that were comfortable with Facebook, I started with Google Communities, hoping to remove some of the preset biases from all parties the ones who liked it and who did not like Facebook. With the nonprofit being more familiar with Facebook, there are fewer questions submitted beyond what was addressed in the initial documents and multimedia. In the case of Google Communities, there were more questions because it was unfamiliar territory. While the group members did have to learn how to construct a business environment inside of Facebook, they did not need any training on how to interface with it, unlike the classes needed with the Google Communities limitations and abilities. The nonprofit liked using the Google Communities because they felt like they had control over the page and the ability to plan events either online or in person. That allowed for reminders to go out, also posting the link of an online event right there on the same page. After completing the Google Cycle, or Cycle 1, I started the Facebook Cycle, or Cycle 2. I asked the group to use Facebook the same way they used Google Communities. We found they could, but because of privacy, it was harder to monitor the additions to the group. Also the fact that only certain people in the group could add events. There was no way to create events online without going into an outside site to create them and then place the link. There is also no easy way to share documents that need to be adjusted by the group. The end of the two cycles, the majority was won over by Google Communities. More felt better connected to the group as a whole. In the future, I'd like to see my research published in the Social Media Monthly. It is one of the foundational steps I'd like to take. While I could publish in a more scientific journal, I feel it would limit the exposure of the research. With a more mainstream journal, this would allow the research to reach more people, and these people in turn could reach out and duplicate the research in their own fields. If these duplicated research projects mirror my own experimental design, it would give further data on how applicable the research is in various fields. With this data in hand, perhaps pressure could be placed to move social media in more of a direction that would create a vibrant, work-focused community. While doing this type of outreach, I would also like to begin developing a community within the online schools that have sprung up in my state in the last few years, including the one that my children attend. I feel this type of community engagement would only serve to deepen and enrich the experience for the student body population. Communication, communication is the way. Communication, communication keeps the problems at bay. Social media can connect us all virtual community standing tall. Your left, left, your virtual left. Virtual left, now pick up the step. Communications, communications is the way. Communications, communications keep the problems at bay.